Hello everyone, welcome to today's webinar. I'm Catherine Dold with CNEN and I'll be moderating today's event. This webinar is titled New Technologies for Target Discovery and Validation and is being sponsored by Wuxi AppTech. CNEN works with sponsors to identify topics of interest and value to CNEN's audience and consistent with their mission to provide news and analysis of the chemistry enterprise in a timely, accurate, and balanced fashion. During the webinar, you can adjust the size of the slides on your screen by grabbing the lower right corner with your mouse. If you need technical assistance, please look for the help widget at the bottom of the screen or type your query into the Q&A box. If you get disconnected during the webcast, please log back in according to the instructions you received earlier. You're encouraged to contribute to the success of this webinar by asking questions at any time during the presentation through the Q&A box on your screen. Our speaker will answer them at the end of the presentation, and as your moderator, I'll be posing as many as time permits. Please note that CNEN does not endorse any company products or services that may be mentioned in the webinar, and that each webinar will be archived at CNEN online after the live webcast. Today's webinar sponsor, Wuxi AppTech, is a global company with operations across Asia, Europe, and North America. Wuxi AppTech provides a broad portfolio of R&D and manufacturing services that enable the global pharmaceutical and healthcare industry to advance discoveries and deliver groundbreaking treatments to patients. Through its unique business models, Wuxi AppTech's integrated end-to-end -end services include chemistry drug CRDMO, biology discovery, preclinical testing and clinical research services, and cell and gene therapy CTDMO, helping customers improve the productivity of advancing healthcare products through cost effection cost-effective and efficient solutions. Our speaker today is Shelley Zhang, MD, PhD, Director 2, HBD at Wuxi Aptech. Dr. Zhang has more than 15 years of experience in cancer research and immunology, including five plus years at HDB. She is leading the exploratory biology team focusing on early target discovery and validation, has built up an advanced gene editing platform and various new technologies, has extended CRISPR to primary immune cells, and has developed and expanded multiple new modalities, including TCRT, CAR-T, PROTAC, TPD, and AOC-ASO. She received her medical degree from Peking University Medical School and her PhD degree in pharmacology at UPenn Medical School. I'll now hand the program to our speaker. Thank you, Catherine, for the introduction. Hello, everyone. This is Shelley Fang Zhang from uh, HDB Wuxi AppTech presenting today the webinar for New Technologies for Target Discovery and Validation at HDB UC AppTech platform. Here at HDB UC AppTech, we have a comprehensive target discovery and validation platform that is propelled by CRISPR and other new technologies. As you can see here, centered around the advanced genomic manipulation platform, which we called AGM platform, which is a CRISPR centerpiece uh, toolbox. We have established a platform that can help provide solutions for target discovery validation, invite wide choices of disease models, including oncology, immuno-oncology, inflammation, um, autoimmune disease, uh, as well as metabolic disease, genetic dis disorders, and CNS neurodegenerative disease. And we have established comprehensive phenotypic and functional assays to help us with the solutions. And we also, beyond that, we have diversified a cell bank of around 1,000 cancer cell lines for the platform. 
and we also have in vivo uh, mouse genetic models to also help with the downstream in vivo studies. So our um, advanced gene manipulation NGM platform at HDB with the Aptex is a platform with innovative technologies and know-how. So it includes vector-mediated gene delivery and manipulation. It includes lantivirus, retrovirus, as well as other ways of delivery like electroporation-based, transfection-based, and we provide comprehensive options from cellular tissue to in vivo models. So this provides valuable tools for in-depth mechanistic studies as well as proof of concept evaluation. So the CRISPR-centered advanced genomic manipulation AGM platform, we can do um, you know, cell line generation, not just knockout by CRISPR, but also knock in by CRISPR, as well as knock down by XRA or SHRA, as well as overexpression cell line. So all these different genetic manipulation, they serve to provide um, methodology for target um, validation. And we also have um, sgRNA, the CRISPR library screen, uh, as well as shRNA uh, library screens. Those, those are for knockdown. So this helps to identify novel targets for synthetic lethality, for drug modifiers, and also we have ubiquitin pathway libraries customized to identify specific E3 that's responsible for protein-like molecules, mechanistic, um, mechanistic studies, as well as optimizations. Uh, I can have some more detailed case studies in the later slides. We have successfully extended CRISPR technology to primary cells, including primary immune cells and also iPSCs and also upgraded our conventional CRISPR um, technology to base editing and prime editing. So these provide more precise and uh, um, with less off-target effect. So I can also give some more detailed examples in later slides. So beyond that, after the manipulation of these target genes, we will observe the impact of such target genetic manipulation on the phenotypes. So we have comprehensive phenotypic assays. I just included here some examples like high content analysis, IQ, etc. And also, um, this has been utilized in protein talking protein degradation platforms such as we utilize CRISPR knocking for happy knocking, and we also are doing smash knocking. This is a very large fragment knocking, and uh, it requires a lot of uh, technical intricacies as well as um, uh, in-depth scholarship. So all these leading edge capabilities help to support target discovery validation as well as new modalities. So this is slide showing a library screen for synthetic lethality gene or drug modifiers. And basically, as I just mentioned, we can choose from select either SH library or um, SG library for CRISPR uh, knockout. So these are having um, different purposes well, the SH maybe knockdown, they are good for phenotypic screen. And uh, the Cas9 guide library media knockout uh, study library screen, they're more suitable for synthetic lethality screen. Um, so here is showing a, a basic outflow of library screen. 
and um, the NGN sequence in the end will tell you the depleted enriched genes. Uh, whose functions are either mediating sensitivity or drug resistance or synthetic lethality. So here's an example showing our CRISPR knockout, um, either a single or double or triple knockout, uh, as you can see here. These can be performed either sequentially or concurrently based on the target and cellular content. And it's further validated shown here by Western blot of the knockout of such targets, ABC. And here an example showing CRISPR-based knocking line for drug resistance studies where we further validated the, the knocking by uh, sequencing um, and you can see this knocking can um, incur the drug resistance as shifting of the IC50 curve. As I mentioned, we also upgraded the conventional CRISPR technology to more precise uh, single base pair editing. So here is showing one example of the base editing. So you can see a majority of the uh, translation mutations from A to G as confirmed by NGS sequencing. And uh, there's also a 30 or so percent mutation C to T confirmed. So this is a, um, um, a illustration showing base editing utilizing the, the aminase ADA to perform the base editing uh, A to G and C to T. And this um, uh, Cas9 has been modified and the base editing results has been confirmed by center sequencing as well as NGS. So CRISPR prime editing is a further upgrading of uh, genetic editing and enables higher precision, efficiency, and versatility. And here we have made a by prime editing to have um, inserted the, the his tag inserted into endogenous locus by prime editing technology. And this is very critical. The, the pack RNA design, you know, its structures, configuration has to be carefully optimized. And uh, this is based on scholarship, and we know that the prime editing technology has been upgraded recently by David Liu's lab, and there are serious papers um, with more advanced optimization. So that enables a higher precision and higher efficient editing um, for the human genetic disease. And this is a technology we are actively um, developing and. Uh, um, keep upgrading it, you know, to make, um, to help to make this technology applicable, you know, in more studies uh, for the genetic um, editing for a lot of uh, human genetic disease. So I think this is really a new era for genetic editing and the, the new technology that's provided by the fast growing uh, prime editing is really very encouraging sighting. And uh, we have the expertise and experience to keep upgrading this platform to enable more comprehensive uh, um, capabilities in this uh, pathway. And as HTB UCF tag, we have comprehensive in vitro assay format technologies as listed here. So from um, multiple target areas here listed GPCR enzymes, ion channel transporters, and all the reporter gene systems, and also um, a full spectrum of phenotypic and functional assays as well as biophysical and mass spec, all listed here, are provided at our platform to give an all-around uh, capability and the solutions uh, for new drug discovery. And we also have uh, 
a full spectrum of multi-mode plate readers as listed here for all kind of uh, cellular biochemical assays as well as liquid handling system to enable more precise and higher throughput screening of compounds. And as I mentioned, we have almost 1,000 tumor cell banks. Um, this covers a wide diversity of tumor types. Um, There's almost 18 different tumor uh, types and with a very uh, wide ge geographic diversity. And we also have a genomic data for over 300 lines and the SOP guided cell line characterization validation to ensure the, the quality of the cell lines. And utilizing these cell lines, we can uh, really do a lot of studies, um, including a lot of the uh, proliferation assays listed here in our high um, throughput screen platform and also 3D um, colony assays and steroid assays and protein expression panel profiling and a lot of other phenotypic assays, including co-culture systems to um, get you the matched compatible tumor cell lines together with your CAR-T PCR or other um, engineered or um, non-engineered immune cells for co-culture study purposes. And here is the one example showing um, the capability of setting up a sophisticated assay system to dissect very complex mechanisms and evaluate efficacy. So we have successfully reconstituted and validated a functional team 3 gal 9 a normal immune checkpoint complex. Um, this is through a multiple steps of um, advanced genomic manipulation. Um, so we, we actually have knockout of the endogenous GAL9, and we have reconstituted a, a GAL9 on top of the, the team 3 overexpression jerk cells, and such a system has been validated to have functional uh, functionality as a um, bona fide immune checkpoint complex, and it provides new impetus as well as a platform to screen for novel team 3 gal 9 targeting immune checkpoint blockers, including both small and large molecules, to help reinvigorate T cells. Um, so this is um, um, a project that has been uh, published online at ACR meeting. We also have successfully expanded CRISPR platform to various kinds of uh, both human and mouse in primary immune cells. So listed here, you can see that we have successfully um, performed the CRISPR-based knockout. And uh, this is performed in a very short time frame by electroporation. And uh, such a short window enables multiple downstream functional analysis such as RDQPCR ELISA for cytokine studies and in different types of primary immune cells. So these target has been validated to have high efficiency, mostly over 50% efficiency of knockouts as validated by both the facts-based expression, uh, surface expression reduction by facts evaluation as well as sequencing um, evaluation of indel percentage. So utilizing these capabilities, we can uh, investigate novel immune targets, their function, their impact, um, as well as um, the you know a lot of the target discovery and the validation in the challenging field of immunology. So here at HDBUC APTEC, we have a very comprehensive mutual immunology platform to support target validation, mechanism studies, as well as as well as screening. So this encompasses um, three, four different aspects 
um, including in different immune cells activation as listed here proliferation assays biomarker profiling for PBMC T cells and K monocytes, etc., and uh, including staph phosphorylation and migration assays, etc. And also, uh, secondly, immune immune cell co culture, such as mixed lymphocyte reactions for evaluating T cell activation functions, um, M2 T cell, MDNC T cell, T rat. So, all these uh, can evaluate suppressive immune cell functions. Also, we have immune tumor cell co culture, as I just mentioned. So, we can measure tumor cell killing by either PBMC or CDA, CTL T cells or NK cells, as well as uh, I will mention in the new modality later in our engineered T cells, CAR T, T cell T, we can utilize this uh, co culture platform to evaluate and validate those functions. And the co culture also enables us to do assessment for ADCC, ADCP, and CDC. And in addition, we have immune cell polarizations. We can do biomarker profiling for different T helper cells, TH1, 2, 17, as well as TRAG, and different type of uh, uh, microphages like M1, M2 and also MDSC, and about that also um, phagocytosis studies, so this is actually a co-cultured setting, uh, co-culture with the target tumor cells and assess phagocytosis. So at HTB ucf Tech, we have a very comprehensive protect platform that has been keep evolving. Uh, including not only just the high bit knocking for cellular assay screen, but also all sorts of uh, biochemical assay to assess the the tertiary, um, um, the the binary binding of the protein molecule to the targets. Uh, we have expanded um, this platform into primary immune cells. So we have successfully done high bit knocking in primary T cells as demonstrated in this case. So we have put happy knocking tag into stat 3, a very hot target in um, T cells, primary T cells, uh, responsible for a lot of the inflammatory diseases. So we, we have validated the stat 3 habit, which shown by a nanolucifers reporter assay to have demonstrated over a 100-fold very robust assay window, and this is lasting up to three weeks. So this enables not only just validation um, of the, the target, but also um, 384 well-played uh, drug screening capability. And when we assess the IC50 of the reference compound, we can see the reference compound IC50 very much matched with the reports. So this validates the system. So this gives us um, um, a very robust, um, robust uh, platform to help to do a protein evaluation in primary T cells and um, enable compound screen. <coughs> So we also have, over the, the recent years, developed a, um, very much flashed TCRT CAR-T new modality platforms. So we, we have developed really high efficiency, up to 90% uh, expression efficiency delivery system for adoptive T cell therapy. And we also have uh, done a lot of the optimizations um, as I shown later slides for more comprehensive evaluation of uh, tumor cell killing as well as uh, chemo taxes. And this is just a showcase showing how the um, cytokine interferon gamma was evaluated as a readout of T cell, uh, TCRT CAR T activation when they're co cultured with their matched antigen expressing tumor cells.
So here's an example showing um, the TCRT efficacy evaluation by a kinetic target tumor cell killing via incucide. So this green fluorescent marks the activated caspase 3 and 7. So they are uh, readouts for tumor cell apoptosis. And by incucide, we can do a dynamic kinetic evaluation of the tumor cell killing. So here you can see the time length chasing by incucide, this time dependent killing very significantly uh, elevated, especially with a higher ET ratio, you have more killing. And um, yeah, I have some uh, movies played here. Let me see if that's working. So if you click on the movies, uh, it's actually supposed to show um, dynamic um, appearing of the caspase 3 and 7, the green fluorescence coming up only in the TCRT co-culture system, but very much less in the control and the none in the basal conditions. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't think the, the webinar platform is supporting this uh, um, this uh, movie playing here, but from these figures, you can clearly see the quantification of such kinetic cell killing. So this is a very robust platform to assess um, TCRT CAR T killing in a very dynamic way, and you can further evaluate at appropriate time point for the cytokine uh, assessment to validate T cell activation. And furthermore, we have um, established a TCR CAR T chemo test assessment by Transwell assay. So here you can see the upper channel uh, C3 T cells were related cells. Models got attracted to chemokines secreted from TCRT, harboring specific new elements in the lower chamber. So then you can really see quantitatively how these uh, chemotaxis is happening in a dose dependent manner. And utilizing this specific activation condition, we applied for specific receptor, uh, chemotaxis receptor inhibitors, and you can see dose dependent inhibition of that chemotaxis validating the specificity of this assay. So this is a, a more comprehensive evaluation and uh, of our TCR CARDI platform. And uh, I'm going to switch gear to other platform that is the SRA screening. So this part of the antibody article conjugate where the, con the conjugated uh, um, oligos uh, here, like uh, SRNA, is going to um, knock down the target gene in the um, pathogenic cell type. So the aim here is to to evaluate the SRNA uh, to get the potent hits um, that can be conjugated to that uh, antibody ligand to carry into the cells. So we have done a very comprehensive multi-layer optimizations from the transaction region from the region volume time point, housekeeping genes, and different lysis conditions, and identify the most appropriate conditions that enable a very robust and consistent screening for SIRAs. So that enables us to screen hundreds of SIRAs for um, you know, many, many targets in a very high efficient way and with a much stringency of the assay. The um, you know the RD PCR screen is mostly for mRNA level knockdown by SRA, and we further validated by protein level knockdown by in cell Western using LIPO machine. So this is performed 384 well played, and you can see the target uh, visually the fluorescence in a dose dependent reduction manner. Well, the the housekeeping gene beta active remains stable, and we can quantify quantify that ratio and generate the IC50 curves that very well correlated with our SRA RDPCR results. So this is a validation uh, of that SRA as well as you can be utilized for screening purposes to screening um, large quantity of uh, SRAs at the protein level knockdown efficiency. 
So when we are searching for the target cells, the surface receptor is going to bind with the antibody to carry the oligo inside the cells. We screen for multiple different cells, including our target cells as well as control cells. So we identify the, the genes that express highly in the target cells, and then we further validate these surface receptors are indeed, they are residing in the surface of that target. So here in the target cells particularly, we can see by fractionation, we can really um, see the presence um, in the, the plasma membrane fractions of this target protein by Western blood. And when we also transfect that SRN against that target gene, when we validate the knock, knockdown efficiency by these target gene SRAs by RDPCR, we correlated the protein level knockdown in time-dependent manner. Um, so these uh, assays are corroborating with each other. So this validated the signal of these uh, surface uh, fraction um, protein signals as well as validated the surface localization of this target. And this is, again, confirmed by fact studies where you can see by the three different time point SI transfection, you see concurrent reduction, the knockdown of these fact surface signals. So again, validating the surface localization as well as the fact signal. So we um, summarize in the figures here. So by three different approaches, the fractionation, the FAST, and the XRA, RDQ, PCR, uh, we confirmed the surface localization of such uh, targets on a particular target cell. So this is really not just uh, useful for the, the antigen oligo conjugate platform, but also can be readily applied for other cell therapy to validate surface um, surface um, targets localization in a similar manner using these comprehensive different approaches. Uh, we also have established uh, new modalities, RE editing by ASO and with multiple optimizations. So here the restore mechanism is that the ASO design can recruit uh, endogenous the amnes eta, so then it can produce um, MRA level editing uh, for that uh, target gene. And after optimization, you can see um, the editing uh, the editing efficiency from 20% has been greatly robustly increased uh, to over 40%. So this gives a uh, a very promising platform to move on to further ASO um, RNA editing drug solutions. And as I just mentioned in the beginning, uh, for the comprehensive protect platform, we have further extended uh, to E3 library screens. So to enable the E3 library screen, we first established a suitable cell lines with a lot of optimization. So here in the cartoon figure, you can see how we have packed a fluorescent GFP um, at the N or C term of the target protein, as well as by um, RS link with the RMP. So the, the GFP is going to demonstrate, reflect the degradation of target protein while RP uh, functions the normalization control. So once we treat the, the protag or molecular glue compound to induce degradation, we optimize the condition and achieve a condition with optimized uh, level of degradation. And so then we can introduce our ubiquitin, uh, including E3 libraries, into this system. And then we can evaluate by fat uh, sorting to find out the resistant population and identify the E3 that's responsible for the degradation. And this um, can help with the optimization of such protein like molecular glue compound design.
And we also have an internal new tag development for a barcoding cancer cell panel. So we have 1,000 cell lines that I mentioned. To boost the, um, the panel screening, we have developed um, the barcoding system. That is that we barcode it um, into either safe harbor by CRISPR or a virus-based infection to barcode each individual cell lines that especially the 300 also frequently use the cell lines for panel screen. And then we validated these barcoding um, by Luminex as well. We pulled the, um, the, the, the screen with the, uh, the reference compound EGFR inhibitors or LT inhibitors. And we validated um, you know, this pooled cluster of cells they showed similar IC50 in these pooled condition versus the single cell condition. So this correlates with the published data, and we are working on expanding them to the 300 to 400 mostly used cells. So then we can have a higher efficiency panel screen, as well as this can be applied to tumor, tumor uh, heterogeneity studies. So just as a summary, HDBUC APTEX growing comprehensive target discovery and validation capabilities as propelled by various new technologies, including CRISPR and other new technologies, provide comprehensive solutions for drug R&D research across multiple disease areas as well as new modalities as listed here, including the very hot new modality cell therapy, such as CAR-T, TCRT, and CAR-NK, and also for undruggable target, protect target protein degradation, um, also um, antibody oligochondrogate, AOC, and ASO-based RNA editing and also including CRISPR library screen for novel target discovery, as well as 1,000 tumor cell line uh, panel barcoding to uh, efficiently boost the panel, panel drug pa panel, cell panel drug screening, as well as uh, tumor heterogeneity studies, and also upgraded uh, gene editing uh, from conventional CRISPR to more precise, more efficient, such as base editing and prime editing. And we also expanded CRISPR into primary cells, uh, including various primary immune cells. So taken together, um, this comprehensive platform propelled by new technologies for novel target discovery and validation, provide solutions for a client's need in all aspects of drug discovery and especially in new modalities. Thank you very much for your attention, and uh, I would love to take questions. Thank you. Thank you for a great presentation, Dr. Zhang. Just a reminder to our audience, you can submit your questions in the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. OK, let's get to our questions. First question for Dr. Zhang, how would Wuxi Biology support clients' requests from target discovery to target validation leveraging your integrated platforms? Thank you very much, Catherine. Um, so as I mentioned just then in my slides, we have such a comprehensive platforms enabling target discovery and validation propelled by CRISPR and new technologies so we can utilize this all-around platform to provide service to help you discover novel targets by CRISPR library screen, and then validating it through comprehensive approaches. 
and through multiple assays for uh, functional impact as well to give you um, a full service supporting from discovery to validation. And this includes not only just in the fields of oncology, but also immuno-oncology, autoimmune disease, CNS degenerative disease, all kinds of disease areas. And we can utilize our diversified cell bank of almost 1,000 cancer cell lines to help you with such work. And um, the platform also provides very comprehensive, sophisticated phenotypic and functional assay solutions. And all the way, including both in vitro and in vivo, using our mouse models to validate um, with very much a stringency. So I think that that's the answer for the first question. Thank you. Okay. Okay, next question. How can we utilize expanded TPD PROTAC platforms using HDB expanded new technologies? Yeah, so we, we have established very comprehensive PROTAC platforms and expanded further into E3 library screens for PROTAC or molecular glue molecules. So we have, just as I described, a very sophisticated system to set up a fluorescent tag to target protein. And we can monitor kinetic degradation of this fluorescent tag target protein in a very dynamic way. And utilizing this condition setup, we can use SAS to perform a library screen to identify specific E3 that really govern the degradation of that particular target. So this is very powerful and helpful to help to optimize the molecular glue or protein molecule. And uh, besides that, we also have explored and uh, the more advanced uh, technology of smash knocking. So this is a technology that has more cutting edge than DTAG because it does not have a cubosome tag on the endogenous protein, but rather it's an ASC-induced smash knocking that gives you a very rapid, um, a real-time knockout effect. So this is also a new expansion of our protect targeting protein degradation platform. So okay. I think we Thank you. can get... Sure. Go ahead. Uh, taken together, I think all these uh, protein target protein degradation pathway can be utilized uh, to support um, diversified needs or novel and durable target development in the utilizing this platform. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Our third question: How can we utilize the TCRT? CAR-T platform to support novel cell therapy development? So we have a growing established platform for CAR-T, TCRT. And as I just demonstrated, we have further um, developed very comprehensive assessment of TCRT, CAR-T killing of tumor cells by co-cultured assay and using intusite to kinetically assess that killing. And you know, this also um, gives a, a add-on to the platform. On, on top of that, we have also developed chemotaxis assay by Transwell to assess um, the chemotaxis effect by TCR CAR-T with new elements. And to, together with the, the, the T cell activation evaluation, all, and from the very start of the, the TCR construct optimization and the T cell culturing optimization, this is all around aspects of this platform to support um, from the head to end service platform to help the, the cell therapy platform. So this is a very robust platform and uh, it really can help clients um, to address their questions about novel Cell therapy. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Uh, next up, <clears throat> how can we explore new modalities such as ProTac, TPD, AOC, and RNA editing or ASO 
using HDB new technology capabilities? Um, so as I just uh, demonstrated, we have growing and uh, very strong platforms utilizing our new technologies, CRISPR centered. So all these provide solutions to further develop and optimize this uh, new modality, this hot new modality platform. Um, you know, this includes not just the protect TPD I just described, but also expanding to other new modalities like the, the ASO media RNA adding platform and also the, the anybody oligo conjugate platform where we can do not just the, the ASOSI RNA screening, but also on the comprehensive setup for validation of surface receptors. Um, so all these provide very um, sophisticated and comprehensive solutions to, to address to these new modalities. And these new modalities, you know, they, they just give you um, more options for different aspects of target um, solutions. Okay. And our last question, what are the pros and cons of CRISPR technology? Yeah, I think that the CRISPR technologies have a lot of advantages. Um, you can do a considering knockout or conditional knockout to really validate the functions of your target. Um, and we can do validation very thoroughly by both the sequencing level validation of the indel percentage for the CRISPR knockout, but also from protein level to look at the protein knockout effect and its functional impact. So all these give you a very clear answer about what the protein's role in the cell biology, and uh, this can be utilized for further development of cell model for screening. However, the cons of the technology is that, um, you know, sometimes the, the guide design has caveats. Um, the guide, depending on the sequence context, sometimes you don't get efficient knockout. So you really need, um, you know, strong capabilities to optimize this guide, which we have accumulated over our over um, almost eight years of CRISPR experience to optimize guide design to achieve the best knockout efficiency as possible. And the second leg, CRISPR can produce off-target sets. So that's why you need to design multiple guides and do rescue studies to validate which are the specific on-target sets. So, so for all these caveats of CRISPR, we do have solutions. But you know, these are something associated with CRISPR, and that's why it has been con continuously upgraded to base editing, prime editing, which we also have set up platforms to enable more precise gene editing with less side effects and with more diversity. I think they are the, the trend for the gene editing in human diseases. And I think it's really um, an opening a new era for the genetic disease uh, gene editing, which you know we have seen a lot of progress from David Liu, uh, recent publication of progress, and uh, we are fastly capturing that into incorporate into our technology. Thank you. Okay, that is all the time we have today. Thank you again, Dr. Zhang, for your fascinating presentation. And thank you to our participants for being a great audience and to ON24 for technology and production services. And thank you, Wuxi Aptek, for the sponsorship that made this interactive webcast possible. Be sure to check CNEN or CNEN, CNEN online for information on upcoming webinars. For CNEN webinars, I'm Catherine Dold. Goodbye. Okay, thank you. That's good.